Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over daily technical analysis update for gold and silver. Uh, we're gonna look at the dollar, the 10-year yield. We're gonna look at all the precious metals, some ETFs, and some companies. And I'll give you my financial opinion. Again, it's just my opinion, please don't use it as advice. Uh, but let's dive into the charts, let the charts do the talking, and get right into it here. So here is the dollar and gold on the dailies today. Uh, the dollar started strong, but ended weak. Uh, it looks like we're still kind of in this downtrend, uh, left to right motion down a little bit. Gold up 14.8, we're at 1868. Nice, strong day today, and it finished pretty strong. We, we were pulling back, but it finished with some buyers at the end. So hopefully they can, they can continue tomorrow with some good momentum, hopefully. Uh, the dollar from a long-term perspective, again, we had a small down day today, just down a little bit, but it's it's broken out. It is moving. Uh, money's moving around. It's seeking dollars in this. Uh, it's, it's, it's a uh, who, a race to the bottom of whose currency is going to fail first or something like that. We have massive inflation everywhere, uh, but the dollar is the strongest of the bunch of the confetti crew. But uh, at the moment, it's gonna continue higher. It's what the, the charts are saying. Looking at the 10 year yield, the 10 year yield on the very short term, looks like we could have a small pullback, but it's broken this trend line uh, and it's broken to the upside. And hopefully we'll see some, some higher yields. That's probably what we'll see with the inflation out there. Looking at gold, it looks absolutely excellent. It's a bullish engulfing pattern. We had this little pullback. It opened and opened lower and closed higher, engulfing the day before it. This means that it's a bullish formation to move on up. Silver's got the same formation, bullish engulfing. So we've got nice big buying pressure, two small selling pressure days on lower volume with the bullish engulfing signaling that we could probably head higher here. That looks good. Platinum selling off a little bit. Uh, again, not too bad. We've got higher buying pressure, smaller selling pressure. Like to see it move on up. And here's copper. It wanted to play with the line a little bit more. Came back. It, it went below it. Buyers bought it back up above this resistance line. We've got a full kind of retest, I think, in play. Let's see if we can move on up. Uh, I don't want to see it break down below and close below it. It's about where you close, not where you open. Now, looking at the mining companies, looks like they're running into some resistance. This guy's got some resistance at 35. If you look to the left, resistance here, resistance here, resistance. It's all a bunch of resistance through here. Hopefully, we can break on through here tomorrow with a stronger gold price. Fingers crossed. Uh, looking at GDX from a weekly candlestick chart, uh, we're kind of fanning out here. On this pullback, we still can move on up on a weekly basis. Everything looks okay. I don't see any, any problems yet. Uh, SILJ is looking okay. Uh, coming on up, hitting some resistance through here. It's kind of stuck. And my, I can say that for a lot of them. They're kind of getting stuck here. Black candlesticks aren't really a, a candlestick for a great move higher. Usually they end and result with a down day the next day after it. And I'm seeing black one there, black one there, and so forth. This one's got another black one as well. And, and what that means is your candlestick, just, just so you guys know what a black candlestick is, it opens, this is, Yesterday's close was here. It opened here. So the opening price is here and it closes here. So it went downward throughout the day and last closing price is here. So it's still an up day. So this candlestick is a black candlestick. It's still an up day, but the momentum's going back down. So that's what a what a black candlestick means. So the momentum's going back down, then they're not usually reversal candlesticks to move on up. And we're seeing this usually you see them kind of where they find resistance. A move comes up and it finds resistance, 
and it starts to slow down and turn. Well, here's Teuton Resources. This one looks pretty good. Nice, good volume today. Like to see this thing really move on up. Sandstorm Gold, another one of those black candlesticks. Looks like we're slowing momentum and could, could kind of come back a little bit. Still looks pretty good. Big buying pressure, small selling pressure throughout. Looks okay. Corora Resources looking really good. 4.1% close today. If you look at the long-term perspective, we're breaking out and there's not much resistance up here. Uh, it came from like $9 all the way down. Now I think we could move on up because uh, there's no resistance. There's no overhead resistance holding us. Uh, so that one looks good for Corora Resources. Looking at Wesdom Gold Mines, it's still hanging out up here. I'm just looking at a couple new ones. Big buying pressure came into some resistance support, which is support right underneath it. And from a big picture view, it's got a good, a good, uh, a good chart here. I don't, I didn't show it, but it's right at support here, so it doesn't look bad here for Wesdom Gold. AGI has got a line coming through here. It broke out. Sometimes they go and do a, a return move, and then they move on up. So this one is one that I'm watching, Alamos Gold. Silvercrest is another one that had a pattern. It's right above it. It hit its head. It's coming on back. I'd like to see it reverse and break through the pattern. It's, I don't have the big pattern here, but I've been watching this on the short term to see what it's going to do. And then Oceana Gold is another one I've been watching. Moving sideways, it moved on up. It's two, two small down days. I think we're going to see a move on up out of Oceana Gold. Because whenever you have this big buying pressure coming through and then small selling pressure, it's usually accompanied with more buying pressure. Here's Silver Lake Resources. I'll do a little bit of drawing on this guy here for everyone. So looking at this, we have this line going through. Then we've got another line going through here. And I'll throw a line in the middle. It, uh, it's a fanning pattern that kind of comes down. It'll break off the top there. Come on up. It's, it's hugging the top. I'd like to see a break to the top here, to the upside. And this is usually a continuation pattern when you have your pattern downward sloping like this. So you get the nice big pull coming up. And then you get this pattern going across. And then a break to the upside would mean a nice good continuation pattern. Here's Newmont Corporation looking at this guy here. Came on up, pulled on back. We broke this downtrend line and it's still doing all right. Hitting some resistance. So that's what I have for today for the gold sector. It's gold and silver. Uh, copper is another one to look at. I didn't put any copper companies in this one. I guess I forgot to throw those in there, but some of those look really good. I would be looking at Glencore, GLNCY, Nova Royalty. Tech, uh, Freeport, McMoran, FCX, those all look pretty good. The diversified mining companies, they're still coming down. I would still wait and, and buy into strength. I never buy into weakness. I never buy into something that's falling. I wait for it to bottom, start to turn, and then I buy into it in, in that strength. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just holding on with some of the diversified mining companies at the moment. Uh, but overall, gold, silver, platinum, they look good. Gold and silver look extremely good with those bullish engulfing patterns. Usually that's a continuation move or a reversal move to the upside. Uh, so that looks really good. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.